Chapter 20 The Battle at the Rock Once he had rewrapped the diamond and put it back in his pack, Dune's first thought was of Lena. She couldn't have traveled during the night. There was a chance she might still be nearby, might just now be starting her journey to Sparks. How could he find out? He would have to get up high and look out over the hills to the west. Even in the near dark it wasn't hard. He scrambled up the mountainside, finding roots and jutting rocks for handholds and footholds, until he came to a place flat enough to stand on. He turned around. The folds of the hills lay before him, receding into darkness. Was she out there? He filled his lungs with air and shouted, Lena! Lena! Hello! 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 Would she hear him? Was she so far away that his voice might seem nothing more than the wind or the cry of an animal? He waited, hearing no answer. Weariness overcame him. He might as well rest here a moment, he thought, before starting home. He sat down on the ledge with his back against the rock. His eyes closed. And when they opened again, the sky was lighter, though the sun was still behind the mountain. He stood up and called again. Lena! Are you out there? Lena! Hello! And then he realized there was something else he could do. He slung his pack off, reached into it, and pulled out his generator. In a moment, his light was shining. Dune's shouts flew out through the cold morning air and across the fields. Lena didn't hear the first one, she was still too far away, but she heard the second one. Though it came from a distance, she knew it was a human voice. Her heart jumped. Was it Dune? She had been walking now for half an hour, and was within sight of the shoulder-shaped rock. She raced toward it, stumbling over clumps of wet grass. Dune! she called. Is that you? Call again! Call again! The voice rang out. Hello! 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 The Ember Mountain loomed huge and dark against the sky, but toward its base she saw a dot of light. A bright, steady light that could only be one thing. I'm here! She yelled at the top of her lungs. I'm coming! But had he heard her? Could they find each other? With the wind at her back, she made her way to the great rock and climbed up its sloping side to the top. Here she shouted again and waved her arms. Dune! Dune! This way! He's out of the city, she thought. We're all right now. We'll find each other and go home together. She saw his light move, fade, and go out. He must have heard her then. He'd put the light away and was coming. Lena waited on the rock. Little by little, the sky grew brighter at the edge of the mountain, though the mountain's shadow still darkened the fields. Every few minutes she called out, and she heard Dune's answering call grow closer. There was another sound, too. What was it? A sound of rustling, a sound of breathing, and then suddenly, right below her, a growl. She looked down to see three long, lithe, shadowy shapes in the grass. Animals. Their tails twitched, their heads were like spear points aimed in her direction. Dune had heard Lena's answer to his call, and with huge relief had made his way down the mountainside and started toward her. He put away his generator and strode as fast as he could out into the fields. He thought she must be near the big humped rock that thrust up from the ground near where the stream made a bend. For a while they called back and forth. He guided himself by her voice, and soon he could see her, still small in the distance, standing on top of the rock and waving. His spirit rose. He forgot for the moment how tired he was and hurried on, almost running. Behind him, the sky grew lighter. Lena wasn't calling anymore, probably because she could tell he knew where she was. He went down the slope of a hill, losing sight of the rock for a moment, and veered slightly to the right and then up again, until the big rock looked hardly more than a five-minute walk away. That was when he heard the scream. And with the scream came another sound, 
a sudden frenzy of barking. He stopped, baffled. Dogs? Why would there be... Then he remembered. Wolves were like dogs, Kenny had said. Wolves would bark. His heart jolted, and he dashed forward. Another scream rang out, and Dune gave a shout in answer, too breathless and panicked to form words. He ran, stumbling, until he was close enough to see what was happening. Lena was on top of the rock, and below her the wolves, stretching their long faces upward, growled and snapped their jaws. Dune's knees went loose, but he willed himself to stay standing. He knew Lena had seen him. She was gazing at him with horrified eyes, too frozen with fear to call out. He was on a slight rise, perhaps fifty feet from the base of the rock, behind the wolves and a little above them. Their growling was terrible. It came from deep in their throats, a sound charged with threat and power. As he watched, one wolf darted forward from the rest. It rose on its hind legs, and suddenly it was immensely tall, its front feet reaching up the slope of the rock only a yard or so from Lena's shoes. Could wolves climb? Could they jump the distance up to Lena? Would they, at any moment, circle the rock and climb up the slope behind her? Somehow he must scare these creatures away. He had no weapon but his own voice. He gathered his strength and gave a tremendous shout, packed with all his fear and horror. The wolves heard him and looked in his direction. Now he could see their faces clearly, the long, narrow mouths jagged with teeth, the slanting yellow eyes. He shouted again, and this time called, Lena! Scream at them! Make noise! Throw rocks! The word noise jogged his memory, and he reached down and yanked up a blade of grass. In a second, he had what Kenny called a wolf-scaring whistle. He blew, making a long, ragged shriek. The wolves glowered at him, but they did not retreat. Lena yelled, and the wolves turned back toward her. Without taking her eyes from them, she bent her knees and clawed at the rock beneath her, scratched away a handful of loose stones, and flung them down. For a moment the wolves fell back, but only for a moment. Then all three animals leapt upward again, snarling and yelping, and Dune forgot his own safety and ran forward, yelling out terrible noises, flinging his arms about wildly. He stumbled, his foot twisted, and he felt a quick pain but ran on, hardly noticing. If only he had a weapon, even a stick! But he had nothing, nothing, and Lena was in peril, and he was getting so close that any moment he would be among the wolves himself. If he could only somehow frighten them, scatter them. He stopped short, his pack thumped against his back, and he ripped it off and reached in and pulled out the diamond. In one quick motion, he tore aside its yellow wrap. There was a split second when a needle of grief pierced him. Then he flung the diamond with all his might into the midst of the wolves. But the diamond missed the wolves and struck the rock. It shattered into a million pieces, an explosion of glass splinters. The wolves yelped, ducked their heads, and staggered backward. Once again Dune yelled, and so did Lena, kicking down more stones. The wolves backed away, giving quick, violent shakes to their heads, still growling. Dune saw that their grey coats were thin and patchy, the stripes of their ribs showed on their sides, and on their faces and shoulders was the faintest sparkling where the light caught bits of the shattered diamond. One of them seemed to make a decision. It trotted a short distance away and looked back, and the others, with a last glance at Lena, followed. They loped off down the hillside to the north, and in a few moments they had vanished over the crest of a ridge. Dune took in a long, trembling breath. He stood where he was, suddenly weak, as Lena climbed down from the rock and started toward him. "'Are they gone?' she cried. "'Are you all right?' "'Yes,' said Dune, though he found he couldn't say it very loudly, and as soon as he took a step a pain shot up his leg. His knees folded, and he crumpled to the ground. Behind him the sun at last rose above the mountain. Light flooded the sky, spilled out over the grassy hills, and glittered on the chips of glass that lay scattered over the ground below the rock. The remains of the diamond. <laughs>